It is a stage, but it's a very unconventional stage. But really, if you think about architects in space, all a stage is a, is a kind of demarcation of, okay, you can be here, you can be there. And then in theater, there's always the moment of, okay, actually actors can come out into the audience. So there's already a notion of kind of breaking down that wall between the audience and the actors. And I think this is a performance where it's not a kind of step up to a stage or it's not something that you physically have to climb onto. So we're always thinking about use in a different way. So we are really interested in creating spaces where people are not sure how to use them. And so I like the idea that people would not be sure if this was a stage or not, or you're not sure where you've entered the stage or exited the stage, what's stage left, stage right. It's very ambiguous and that's actually great because then the performers will act in unexpected ways. The audiences will have unexpected emotions. They'll be nervous or curious or not sure, you know, oh, is she performing now or is she off stage? Like, should I be watching this? Is this part of the performance or not? Am I performing now, right? Now I'm sitting on the stage or am I not, right? Or is this just a kind of field? We're here at the Ragdale campus, which is the former estate of architect Howard Van Dorn Shaw. It's a really amazing arts and crafts masterpiece, the house that we're in right now. And then the grounds surrounding include gardens and most importantly, the former Ragdale performance space where Howard Van Dorn Shaw's daughters would stage elaborate plays out in this kind of open air amphitheater, which he designed for them. Currently, the campus is occupied by the Ragdale Foundation. The foundation offers residencies to artists. They're typically writers or visual artists. And then once a year, they have a special program called the Ragdale Ring. Where they ask architects to make a proposal about re-envisioning the Ragdale campus as a performance space. Young architects come for several weeks and construct a temporary Ragdale Ring with a team of 10 to 12 people to do the actual construction and then they would have a series of performances over the summer, members of the community, and it would be open to the public, and that, that's the way it has worked for the past several years. This year was different, <laughs> as it is with everything, uh, with the coronavirus. And this year, the theme was mobility. And given the incredible constraints in terms of being able to gather people on the site, and thus challenging our ability to have a fabrication team here at Ragdale. Ashley and I had had this idea to create large landscape scaled, almost like land art paintings. The idea is to use a GPS marking robot and use it here on the campus and use it to establish these kind of large landscape paintings that either become kind of notations on the ground that dancers and artists can respond to or actually become landscapes that provide physically distanced zones for visitors to come and occupy this large graphic but do it in a safe way. In our practice, we're often looking for things that have been specialized or perfected maybe in other disciplines or in other fields, professions, that maybe architects don't use very often but are spatial in some way. So we found out that there are a few companies around the world that have made robotic painting, typically just to line sports fields. So soccer fields, baseball, football can do any sport really. The robot is incredibly precise and so we were thinking, well, we would like to use this kind of GPS location so that we could get a certain amount of accuracy when we wanted to, but then also we're always trying to kind of push the boundaries of the tools that we're using. And so here we were taking something that in some ways is extremely precise. It's GPS located down to two centimeters if there is good satellite coverage. But then in other moments, it's completely imprecise, like if there are a lot of trees. So of course on the Ragdale campus, there are a lot of trees. And so occasionally uh, it can get you know lost. We see all of those as design potentials. We're making it work through a kind of three month process. So it's a different kind of Ragdale ring, but it's still engages performers, engages architects, and engages the audience, I think, in a new way. One of the questions that keeps popping up is, is this architecture, and how is this architecture? And so what we started to think about a lot was actually the history and tradition of drawing. So the way architects tend to work now is through a kind of disembodied process where they produce drawings and models digitally, and then those are sent to the various trade groups to construct a building. But if you actually look back to its kind of origins, 
you find that some of the first drawings in architecture were actually inscriptions in the dirt of craftspeople essentially outlining the buildings that they were about to create. And so you would get these large one-to-one -one drawings which basically described for the entire community how big the building would be, what its orientation would be, maybe even notions of how people would enter and leave it. And then the building would be constructed exactly on that inscription. And so in a lot of ways we feel like we're working in that same tradition, working completely at one-to-one -one and kind of drawing at a scale that hasn't happened for a really long time. So typically when designing an important factor is understanding how a viewer will participate in the design. You saw that really well when we had a dancer on the site who actually began to use the grid to set up the kind of syncopated rhythms of her movement and actually place herself at different points in the grid. Or this particular example we have here where we're working on creating these physically distanced zones so it's still kind of attached to an idea of human occupancy. And we've thought a lot more about how we're kind of liberated from that vantage because this thing is being broadcast online. And so that privileged view is now something that's coming actually from the vantage of the drone. And what's really integral to this effort is finding a way for people to feel connected to the campus. Those that are new to it, and also those that have known the campus for a long time, but have never seen it from the air. So we've spent a lot of time thinking about how drawing in all these different territories of the site begins to give our audience a kind of larger sense of this place outside of just the iconic image of the house proper. We're really interested in spreading out into the landscape and letting the campus thrive as a new creative context. We understand that architecture has the ability to provide people with different understandings of the same space over and over. At least that's what temporary installations and temporary architecture can do. So we can come back to this field in three weeks, paint a completely different pattern, and hopefully the viewers, the dancers, will be able to think about this architectural space differently each time it's painted. That's what the Ragdale Ring has always done. It's always sort of questioned, okay, these are not buildings, right? These are temporary, but they're still architecture.